you know, the years and years and years, 30 years or so that I owned my cleaning businesses, this was pretty much the, the most important, if not the favorite part of the year. Um, I almost always took the week between Christmas and New Year's off and did things like this. I still went into the office, still worked. Uh, I did the planning. I, I recapped on how the previous year went. I looked forward to what was coming up I, and, you know, what new services I wanted to add, what marketing I was going to do, all of that kind of stuff. And just really, really got ready for the year ahead where I wanted to grow the business to here. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Welcome to the Carpet Cleaner Success Podcast, a show created to inspire carpet cleaning business owners to build their own thriving residential and commercial cleaning business. Your host, John Clendenning, has built and sold successful cleaning businesses for multiple six figures over his 30-year career and is the founder of Carpet Cleaner Marketing Masters, a digital agency that turns your online marketing into a lead generation machine. Tune in as John shares proven tips, strategies, and expert interviews to help fast track your success in the carpet cleaning industry. And we always say about every quarter, you should be checking in every at the six month mark. You should be doing like a halftime check in to see how close you are to your goals. Do you need to adjust our things you're pushing for? Were there amazing plans you had at the beginning of the year that you didn't quite get to and things like that? So that's what we're going to be talking about here today. Okay. So regular housekeeping rules. So make sure you turn off your cell phones. Uh, you know, turn off Facebook. If you're watching this on a cell phone, the very least, uh, turn off your Facebook, turn off your notifications, don't get distracted. If you're cleaning, business owner, carpet cleaning business owner, maid service, home service business owner, and you're serious about getting great results, the next 60 minutes or so are really, really, really gonna be transformative to your business. So what we're gonna talk about, why do I think it's so important? We're gonna talk about goal setting for 2023. We're gonna get right, right down to the nitty gritty and be very specific about it, but we're gonna talk about goal setting for 2023 and how to hit your targets. We're gonna talk about the three fundamentals of marketing success. If you know these, it makes marketing your business infinitely easier. In fact, I just did a, um, a quick little um, uh, take five, it's called with Jeff Cross uh, of Clean Facts Magazine on the ISSA Media uh, website. So it's on the YouTube channel and on their website. Uh, we just did a, a week or two ago, um, whatever. It's just gotten released and it was all about the three fundamentals. So it's just a quick little five minute primer to that just because they're that important. So you wanna know how to optimize your website for conversions. We're gonna talk about why conversions are so important. Most people miss this. Most marketing companies miss talking about conversions and it's critical. And I'll, I'll show you why it doesn't matter how much traffic you drive to your website or how much traffic you drive to your offer, how much traffic you drive to your social media. If you're not converting that traffic, you're spending a lot of money on nothing. So big picture of all the online marketing channels you should be tapping into, and they're different. They, they, they change. Like channels are like channels on your TV. Uh, marketing channels are, are, they have individual attention. So, you know, there might be people that watch the Discovery Network. There might be people that watch um, ESPN. There might be people that watch, have the Weather Network on all day or CNN or Fox News or ABC or NBC and all of those kinds of things. So those, those are, those are channels we're used to in the traditional world. Well, what, why do they run those shows? Why do the news have, why, why are news stations even in existence? Seems like they're trying to hand out news and give you good stories, but ultimately they're a media company and the media company is, is, is trying to sell eyeballs to advertisers right? So you're an advertiser and there are eyeballs around the internet. There are eyeballs in different forms of media. And we'll talk about that. So you want to be able to maximize those. You want to tap into the, um, the right places to be doing that and how to do that right. So that you're not wasting your time doing something that no longer works. Uh, that's old school, or you're not missing out on a major trend. So we're going to talk about the latest trends and what you really need to be focusing on because we're, I think you know that our world changes constantly. So what the kids are into, you know, the TikToks and things like that may not be right for, for your business at you know, the, the, the type of clientele you're looking for, but it doesn't mean that the type of clientele you're looking for is still reading the newspaper print. By, they're still flipping through the yellow pages. Um, you, know, you, you think of all the old traditional media that, that used to be the way us carpet cleaners and home service businesses generated attention. And that has shifted and we know that shifted over the last decade or so. Well, it's continuing to shift and at a faster and faster pace. So when you're the owner of a business, you, your number one job, and I really want you to understand this and write this down. The number one job is not delivering the service. You can hire people to do that. And as you grow, you should hire people to do, to do that. The number one 
job, even if you want to be the guy in the truck and that's where you want to be, but you want to be the guy in the truck that makes $100,000, $150,000 a year take-home income, how do you do that? Well, you do that with better marketing, right? Marketing drives the sales. Marketing is the engine behind the company. And marketing isn't just running an offer or a flyer or a discount. That is, and in fact, it's, it's, it's vastly different than that. What marketing is, is marketing is, is your ability to get attention to your brand and create brand impressions. So it, it's the, the vehicle driving down the street, it's the uniforms on the technicians, it's, it's, it's everything that you do that impacts the marketplace is a moment of marketing. Um, Google calls it a ZMOD, zero moment of truth, and it's the, the moment the brand impresses upon somebody else, right, and puts a, a thought in their head. And, and there's a million touch points where that happens, and you need to be thinking of all of them as a, as a moment of marketing and then ways to f get in front of your market in the right way. So we're going to talk about that, and we're going to build a custom plan. We're going to teach you exactly how to build a custom plan. We're even going to get started on that. We don't have enough time to go, kind of go through that in depth. I used to do um, a whole day of, of coaching and consulting with the, the when, when I got into coaching and consulting. Still owned my business, but started co coaching and consulting other, other carpet cleaning businesses and, and franchise networks and stuff like that. We would do an entire day. Um, there'd be some prep work ahead of time, a good couple of hours with a coffee, close the, the door, and just fill out some forms and fill out so get some ideas written down and then a whole day of um action planning to create the year so um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna go through uh, you know the prep work of that and i've got a little bit of a of you know a bonus for you as well just so you know um if you stay until the end got some goodies for you as well. We got some work, worksheets and things that are going out, but at the end of this presentation, I'm going to teach you how to get our, our our checklist, our online marketing checklist, so you can gauge yourself against where you should be. Um, our website conversion machine um, summary, so that you understand what should be on your website and the things that need to be changed. So if, you, if you've got a webmaster, somebody building your website, you know what you can tell them to do next um, to fix it up. If you need help with that, then you, know, you can reach out. Uh, and we're going to, you know, how to optimize you the, the Google My Business Guide, so the most recent version of our Google My Business Guide, um, we're going to be giving out as well. So Google My Business is the Google Maps listing, and we know in our service injury industry, it's one of the main places you should be. It's not the only place, but it's one of the main places where if you're ranking well for all of the different services you provide, you get a lot of good phone calls day in and day out. So, um, and that's that's without sort of paying for leads. Um, so just just something to keep in mind there as well. So. Who am I? Anybody who's new, most of you guys know me by now, um, but who am I? So uh, John Clendenning, own uh, carpet cleaning businesses, janitorial business, made services, bought, bought, built, and sold for you know 30 years. I was actually owned a window cleaning company while I was still in high school uh, and grew that and then got into all of the other services as well over the years and had crews and teams started in a town of 30,000 people. So we're not talking a millions population, deliver, uh, generated realized start i needed to learn marketing most important thing not how to do the work but how to market the work so within two years early 20s i was out of the truck not the guy in the truck anymore hiring people then had to learn how to you know, hire and manage and all that fun stuff started doing um lecturing and teaching about um and three-day workshops around the world and um and i literally mean around the world island of samoa chilliwack bc vegas um all of um, Orlando, places like that, and teaching other carpet cleaners and service business owners how to how to deliver and market deliver a client client experience that gets people talking about you and how to market your business better and different than anybody else. Um, so all of that's kind of culminated into um, our digital marketing service that we have, Carpet Cleaner Marketing Masters, and on Amazon, if you want to get it, the complete guide, there's a copy of the book right there, the complete guide to internet marketing for carpet cleaners, any service business, any home service business will get a lot of value to it. It's literally that 30 years of knowledge plus the digital side of it, all um, in disseminated into 17 chapters and 300 pages. Took a good long time to, to kind of pull all that information together and write that, but it's it's it was released this year in the summer, and it's the most cutting edge information, everything you need to know. And we're going to tip into a little bit of that stuff right now. Um, just kind of an overview on it. So um, more importantly, what do we do for people? We help companies grow. We help carpet cleaning companies grow. And 
um, be seen number one everywhere, become the top local brand. In fact, that's our mission is to turn 500 carpet cleaners, uh, make them the top cleaning brand in their local marketplace because we want you guys to be attracting the best clients and there are best clients in every market. I don't care how big your marketplace is. There are people that pay more to get services done well. It's better than being scraping the bottom of the barrel and competing against all the people that just run to the bottom at the lowest discount because the customer will find the lowest price guy next time. So you know you don't want to be that. So what do you do to market differently? Well, you don't you don't model the Stanley steamers and the and the sort of like the discount volume marketing because it's it's a rough life and it's a hard way to grow. You 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 deliver great services at great value and especially with the our economy economy being all in flux. Um, that one cool thing about that is the people that have discretionary income continue to have discretionary income through any market slowdowns and stuff like that. So if you're tapping into them more and more, they don't buy the discount stuff anyways. Obviously, they want to they want value for their money and they want to see a good deal. And there's ways to put a marketing message in front of them. And we'll actually talk about that um, today. But you want to make sure that you're delivering a huge amount of value. So you don't need the volume of jobs because you're charging really well. Um, so you've got the top rates and you're booked out weeks in advance. And there's ways to position yourself like that so that you are seen as the best in the marketplace and people are willing to pay more for that. Sometimes twice as much more, three times as much more, literally. Some companies, their average job is $120 and in the exact same market, we're working with the companies, their average job is $400, $450, same exact market. So people literally are willing to pay three, four times more sometimes um, because there's more value in it. So, and if that, if that seems a little shocking to you, you're gonna get a lot out of this. If that, if you guys go, John, I know that, that's what we do. We're the value driven um, higher end carpet cleaner, then that's perfect as well. So, um, so how do we do all of this? Well, we do it by leveraging three core principles of digital marketing, specifically in the digital marketing side of it. So we maximize the opportunities to generate a lead. That's what you want to do. You don't want to have one source to generate a lead. You don't want to take a phone call from somebody saying, hey, I'll sell you Facebook leads. I'll sell you Google, you know, um, Google pay-per-click leads. I'll, you know, all that kind of stuff. You don't want people selling you leads because that's not building a business. You want to maximize the opportunities to generate a lead. That's from your list. That's from your list of, of anybody who's inquired in the past who didn't book with you yet. That list is a very active list that you need to be working. That's from your social media. That's from, you know, the, your Google Maps listing and Google, you know, Google ads and search ads and things like that. Your organic rankings, every one of them can generate a possible lead. Your van driving down the road can generate a lead. You want to maximize the opportunities to generate a lead. You want to maximize your brand impressions. How many times did they see you so they don't forget about you, right? So, you know, they, we do know that, uh, you know, the average person needs to hear from you five to seven times before they decide to, to, to book with you. They've already seen you dozens by that point. They've looked you up. They've heard about you. It's rare that the, the one and done. Oh, I just saw you. I just heard about you. I'm calling and now I'm booking. Very rare. And you need to keep that going even after they become customers of yours and you need to maximize your conversions. So maximizing conversions means it's great to drive traffic to your website, to your social media, to an offer, to a video, to anything like that. You can drive traffic to anything you want. If that traffic does not convert into a phone call and you know, and your phone calls convert them into a, um, a customer, then you're not maximizing your conversions and you're leaving most of the money on the table. I'm going to show you how shocking that is and how much money you could actually be leaving on the table. So, so what's the hardest part about marketing a carpet cleaning business online? You know, type in the chat, let us know what, what do you find difficult about marketing your carpet cleaning business online? I got to tell you what some of the answers are going to be right now as, as they're coming in. There's too many options, completely unclear where to spend your budget. What is your budget? How much should you be spending on marketing? That's a question we get all the time as well. And where do you actually place that money? Where is the attention of your marketplace? And where are you going to get the best bang for your buck? And where are places that you can continuously hedge your bet because you do not want to be in just one place because they constantly change the way the rules go and, and the way they work. And if you're only in one place and it starts to peter off, you're back to square one again. You're starting your business all over again. So, so yeah, you've got SEO and pay per click and websites and social, and you got directory listings and um, you name it. Like there's 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 lead aggregator services. There's a million different places that you can actually market your business online. That you can brand your business. All of those kinds of things. And it it is very very confusing. In fact, we've built this little chart for our, our customers. We talk about it from time to time. And 
like the internet side of things are down here, paid leads and and Google Maps and organic rankings and social outreach and that even on social outreach, there's online groups, there's project shares, there's local awareness, Facebook ads, display ads, offline, there's radio and direct mail. Repeat clients and referral clients should be marketed to online and offline very, very well. Um, strategic partners, that means that you can be on their websites, but also offline as, as well. So we, we know in our industry, there's a lot of good strategic partners. Your website needs to have conversion optimization, retargeting people. Most people who visit leave. Well, what do you do? You don't, you don't just let them walk away. Amazon doesn't let you walk away. Most online stores don't let you walk away. As soon as you leave the site, you're being chased around with ads about the thing you just looked at. That should be happening for small businesses as well, because it's, it's a great way to maintain that brand impressions and intention as, as people are thinking about it and moving away from your website, they'll forget about who you are. They didn't bookmark you. So you want to be in all the online directories, neighborhood marketing, offline and online and brand authority building, how to videos. Um, that's all online. That's YouTube. That's website, things like that. Helpful articles, helping people understand why you know your industry better than anybody else in your local marketplace. You may not know your industry better than everybody else in your local marketplace, but you better have content that makes them think you do. Uh, press releases really, really, really help move the needle on, in, on marketing and sponsorships and all kinds of stuff. So that's the list, right? Problem, it's a major investment, right? And other problem is not so much to show for it. If you're not doing it right, you're spending a lot of money and, and wondering where the results are. So that's a fail. So you don't, you don't have a clear plan. You can overspend or worse, you can underspend. And I really mean that or worse, you can underspend. We see that all the time. People putting in, you know, a couple thousand dollars for a, a carpet cleaning business doing a hundred thousand, 150, 200,000, 500,000. And they're trying to get away with a, you know, 500 to a thousand dollar marketing budget, thinking that that's going to grow a service business. It just doesn't happen. And it literally doesn't because your competitors are, are, are going, going crazy. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop a workbook on you. I know the graphic says 2022. It's actually the two 2023 version of the book. Um, so you can go to carpet cleaner, marketing masters.com slash two zero two three dash workbook. Rima can put that into the chat right now, that link. So you can get it. It's the 2023 version. Um, it's it's a it's a thinking tool. It goes along with these um, the the presentation we're doing here today. Uh, so you don't need to you don't need to download it and watch it along with us. It's it's a takeaway that you can now fill in the blanks. We're going to get you to do some some sort of writing and stuff like that right now. Just grab a scrap of piece of paper and start writing on it. But you can download the workbook, print it off, and fill it in when you're when we're done as well. So, what's the opportunity? So we just said the fail, the problems. Here's we all know it's you know it's expensive and it doesn't return. What's the opportunity? Well, with a clear plan and clear goals and clear targets and KPIs. If you don't know what KPIs, they're key performance indicators. What numbers do you need to hit? How many leads do you need to and phone calls and messages do you need coming in to meet your targets? When you have that clear, you know this source isn't going to be enough. I need to be adding these multiple sources and you want to have a bunch of things automated and just generating leads different times of year, different times of the, the month. They, you, you, you'll get more leads from one source than another. All in, you're going to be generating a lot of, a lot of those, uh, those leads from different sources. So you want to generate enough leads to hit your goals. That's, that's the goal. And you want to have a great return on your investment. Always think of marketing as an investment, not an expense. I have this conversation almost on the daily basis um, with people interested in, you know, having a conversation with me about the services we offer, but also people that we just talk to and consult and, and other carpet cleaners in the industry and stuff like that. They go, you know, John, marketing just seems like such a, a waste of money. And it's it, to me that that conversation does not make any sense. I am probably thought of that my first year in business, again, in high school, but I was actually running a business, um, the, the window cleaning business because of a project in, in business class. And it turned into an actual career, a job that started my whole journey um, just to get marks in, in business class. So I was already learning that marketing is an investment in the growth and the future of your business. If you don't invest a dollar today, you don't make five, ten dollars tomorrow. So some of the marketing you invest in today literally shows up tomorrow or next week. Some of it doesn't show up until the next month and some of it doesn't show up till next quarter and all of it should be snowballing to build your brand impressions so in six months and 12 months 
and 24 months, you're just continuing to grow and add. And, and the best way to think of marketing then is a percentage of revenue. As your revenue grows, your marketing budget needs to grow to support it. And there's very specific numbers in the home service industry, cleaning industry, that if you drop below those, um, you're treading water. And if you go, well, John, I've only spent 5% of revenue. You know, I do you know, $200,000 in sales and I only spent $10,000 in all, all in in my marketing. I'm going to tell you right now that it's the riskiest place to be in because you might get away with it for a little while. You might be the only guy in town. You might be the latest, you know, the, been around the longest and stuff like that. But there are people and other companies and other people wait, waiting to enter the industry that know more about modern social media than you, that know more about um, connecting um, and any one of them could come in and be a disruptor and take over 90% of the business in a local marketplace from all of the other competitors just by out marketing them really, really well. So it, it really comes down to investing strategically in your marketing. So you need your goals. What are your goals for 2023? As Brian Tracy says, success is goals. Everything else is commentary. If you do not have your goals written down and planned, it's not just, ah, I kind of want to get to, right? That's a lot of, you know, kind of by the seat of our pants, um, running a business. That's not running a business. Sorry, it's a hobby, right? Running a business is thinking as a business owner, being very strategic. What is my branding? What is it? What, what? What is, who are my customers? What do I want to, what do I want to project into the marketplace? Who are willing to pay me what I want? What are my goals in my business? How much revenue do I want? How much profit do I want? How much money do I want to take home to um, satisfy my lifestyle? How am I going to get there? If I'm not there yet, how am I going to get there? If I'm there, how do I maintain it? And how do I plan that this thing I've built becomes something you can sell for, you know, three, four hundred, five hundred thousand, half a million dollars like I did in the middle of a pan pandemic, a million dollars, two million dollars, depending on the size of your business. How do you bundle it up to sell it? Well, you don't do that if you don't have goals. So, right. So without goals, the other thing is goals are like the wind in your sails. If there's no wind, your boat ain't moving, right? You're in a sailboat and there's no wind. You're sitting there until the wind, you know, shows up. When, when you've got goals set, clear goals, they are pushing you forward. Can you adjust and tack back and forth? For sure. Okay. You can, you can, you can watch what's coming. You can check, you know, look in your rear view mirror, see where you've gone, where you're headed and, and, you know, tack into the wind so you can keep on path. And then there's ways you can adjust and, and do those check-ins at three months and six months and, and once a year on a, you know, on a two and a three and a five year plan, things like that but you gotta have those goals set or you'll never get there. Harvard did a study, um, I'm, you, you may know about the Harvard study, 1979, um, there was an interview of grads, right? So the, grad, the, the graduates who had graduated from Harvard, of those graduates, 84% of them had no specific goals. So what they did is they had a class and they, they, they watched the class for I think it was a decade after, maybe five years, but I think it was 10 years after they came back to the, the, the graduating class and, um, and, and asked them a series of questions. And when they, were, when they left school, did they have any specific goals? 84% had no specific goals. 13% had had goals that they planned for their life when they graduated, but they had not written them down. And 3% of, of the, all of those gradu graduates that were, um, were interviewed had written down goals and a plan to accomplish them from whatever vocation they are graduating from, right? Of the class, 13% of the class who had goals were earning on average twice as much. So the 13% of the class here that had actually had goals in mind when they left, specific goals, just didn't write them down, they're earning twice as much as the average in the class. More staggering is the 3% that had clear goals, written them down, and knew had a plan in place to accomplish them. Even if their plan didn't work out and they had to adjust, they had a plan in place when they left school of exactly what they're going to do. I'm going, this is what I want. This is, this is how much I want to make by this and this and this. This is the type of company I want to work for. This is who I'm going to interview with. You know, these are all the resumes I'm going to put out, blah, blah, blah. And if I don't like the company, I'm going to move up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And they had all that written out, earned 10 times, 10 times as much as the 97% of the rest of the class. The 3% that written clear goals earn 10 times as much. 
So hopefully that impresses upon you how you need to set clear goals because it gets in your head. It gives you a direction. It really rallies all of your sources. Some people talk about manifesting and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you can manifest something that you want in your life. What I truly think manifesting is, is just part of the human condition and the way the brain works. Um, sure, you might be aligning some quantum physics and the universe and, and, and spirituality and all that kind of stuff, sure. But you're also focusing your attention on a very specific outcome. And next thing you know, it's no different than when you see, you know, you buy a red car and all of a sudden everywhere you go, oh my God, there's so many red cars, I didn't see them before. Because now your attention is focused on seeing something you hadn't looked at before. And I, when you set goals, you're focusing on that thing. And when you focus on that thing, um, you, you, conversations that happen, you focus in, oh my gosh, you're talking about something I'm interested in. Um, you start aligning yourself with the right people. You start getting the right training. You start thinking about how do I go from here? I don't know how to do this, but I want to accomplish this. And you start asking the right questions and, and finding the right people um, in your life. And that's the power of setting goals. It's the power of focus. So there's a framework to focusing uh, on goals. You need to have written goals and a plan. So we're going to show you how to do that, but you're going to write the goals down. You're going to, what do, what do I want to accomplish? And by when do I want to accomplish them? You need to set one year goals, quarterly goals, and monthly goals. That's a good start, right? Not five, 10, 20 year goals. Start with, you know, where are you at the end of this year? Take stock of where you are, where you want to be this time next year. On this date, December 29th, 2023, you look back on your business, what would you want to have accomplished? Do you want another van on the road? Do you want, to, do you want revenue up 25%? Do you want revenue up 50%? Um, do you want it up 100%? What are you going to do to make that happen? How do you, what, how do you break that down quarterly? And how, what, what has to happen every month to get you there? You must have a stopping point at the beginning of every new, new, new year and the end of each quarter to reflect on how your goals are, 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 uh, and how, how, what has turned out from the goal setting you've had and what you want to do next. Um, how are you going to adjust going forward? So a stopping point every quarter and at the end of the year, this is the big one we're talking about right now. Right. So here's some things you're going to be asking yourself. What is your revenue target for this time next year? How much did you earn in that 12 months? How much is that monthly? Pretty easy, divided by 12. If it's a ramping up process, think that out a little bit, saying, hey, right now I'm at this level. You know, say you're at 20,000 a month in sales. And, you know, so that's roughly 240,000 a year, but you want, you know, you want to hit 400,000, right? So you need 160,000 more. Well, you might be 20,000 at the end, or 25,000 at the end of January if you put some marketing into place, but you might be 27,000 in February closer to 30,000 in, 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 in March. So plan it out. How are you going to get to a year end goal of, of being all in at the 400,000? What do you need to do to grow through? What does that number need to look like? Right? So how many jobs will that require? And what's your average job value? Right? And all of these things are changeable. All of these things you, you have control over. So say you want to hit 550,000 bucks. That's $45,000 a month in revenue, right? Pretty simple. So what's your average job? Is your average job 375 right now, which is a decent average to generate good marketing and to generate good profits and to pay your technicians well? Is it lower than that? Do you know how to get it up to that, right? So put your number in where it's at now or where you want it to be. Again, what is the goal? Where do you want your average job to be? And are you gonna learn how to get from here, where you are here? to how to get there. Do you package your services so people have bundles to choose from and things like that, which always ups the value and can up the price a little bit and things like that. So you're not just selling one thing and then at trying to add on the protectors and all the other stuff as separate services, have them bundled into packages. People can choose which one they want. Um, but that's going to be, if your average job is 375, that's going to be 122 um, jobs that you'll require. It's pretty simple math. You just take 45,000 divided by 375. And it's 122 jobs. So pretty simple, pretty simple math you, to get to. So what is your average conversion rate from inquiry right now? Do you know that number? Are you tracking how many calls, how many text messages, emails, all of those kinds of things you're getting, social messages that you're getting asking about your services? And what is, you know, what is the, the, the number that you're actually converting into a job right now? You divide the total number of, calls or leads or inquiries coming in by that conversion rate, right? So for example, in this scenario, say you book 50%, right? Of all the people that inquire about you, 
over right away or over the next coming weeks, the ones that come back because you're chasing them a little bit, you actually have lead nurture and conversion in place, something we'll talk about here, you're getting about 50% of the people that inquire booking. So you should get about 100% of your repeat clients, usually about 90% of referrals, maybe 80 to 90% of referrals, some referrals still just think about it. Um, you know, and then everybody else, is it 50%, 40%, 20%? all in what's your overall booking rate divide that by the number of of, of um the, the the calls that you need um and you'll know that you need 244 leads per month based on that last slide we saw you're going to need 244 leads per month to generate 122 actual bookings to meet your goal do you know where you're going to get 244 leads to run your five hundred and fifty thousand dollar a month business or a year business, right? That was the level that, that our business was running at and it's a couple small markets and we knew where our leads were coming from at all times. And as they changed from offline to online, um, we knew where that was all coming from as well. So, um, so the next thing I'm going to give you is a, I'm, I'm going to walk you through a quick little calculator so you can figure this out, but you guys can play with this. Um, just make a copy. I'll show you how to use this quickly and then we'll move on. But this is, this is a, a really great tool. Uh, to, to determine, to figure out this math for yourself. So let me see here. Do, 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 do. Um, there it is, right there. Okay, so that's the link. You, so it's it's the um, worksheet. So it's carpetcleanermarketingmasters.com slash 2023-worksheet. So Rima can put that um, in the chat as well for everybody. So you can all see um, that link. Perfect. Um, and for example, here's just so simply what you're going to do first is click file up here and make a copy. So you have a copy of your own to play with because you only got view only copy of this right now. Um, and yeah, so you, what you're going to do is you're going to put in what is your annual target rate? So anything with a little arrow, you're just going to move, put a number in, right? So if, say you wanted it to be 450 or our example that we just had before, let's call it 550, all right? All right, so you want, there's your 45 thousand dollars a month to hit that say we said that say your average job was 375 let's just put the numbers in we had there we know we need 122 um jobs uh, your booking percentage was 50 percent say you're actually a little higher say you're at 55 percent right you need you need um 222 um 222 uh leads to book in and what's your average cost per lead average cost per lead is on the next tab are, are you running ppc you know the, these numbers might be a little uh, low in, in today's day and age you might be as high as 65 dollars and as low as maybe 30 dollars um on pay-per-click because the cost of pay-per-click is going way up see the way that up that number there google local service ads that's a good range some markets are as high as 75 dollars now before you can even buy a lead on google google guarantee uh, facebook ads that's a good range for every inquire your leads you get if you're running facebook ads repeat and referrals this is your mailings and your um you know the marketing that you do a lot of it's in-house but cost of a stamp you should be mailing your database once every month to two months once every you know 30 to 60 days period get in their mailbox as well as emails because they don't open their emails but they, they they'll see you in the mailbox for sure postcards and letters and and things like that different ways to, to market people like that so in the course of a year that might be 17 dollars per per qualified customer um you want to be able to rank and rank in google maps and you might have some other sources so now we got 27 dollars is the average cost to buy a lead if you run all of these kind of blended through and, and there's lots of other things we can do but that gives you a good idea so how much do you need minimum minimum monthly marketing budget to hit that goal at that cost, because you figured out how much a lead costs you to buy, you need to spend of your $45,000, just about $6,000 of it, right? You need to spend that to generate that much revenue. So, and where do you allocate it? That's the third tab across. And now you get to see there's that 50, you know, 550,000 just showed up. I'm going to tell you right now that we've got a little, um, you're going to adjust this number right here. 15% is the lowest number you're going to want to put in there. In fact, what you're going to want to do, if you want to continue to grow and not just maintain, 20% is the service, is, is what a service business needs to spend. A 
service business doing half a million dollars needs to spend about a hundred thousand dollars in marketing 20 percent and that's database marketing that you might be going, oh my gosh that's a lot that leaves you four hundred thousand dollars to run the business um so that you've got technicians to pay you've got equipment you got supplies and you've got your own wage as the owner of the business and you have a profit that the business generates every single year. Now you've got a mature business that's not just gonna flounder because you take every, every dollar out. It's not gonna flounder because you're not investing well in your marketing. You've got a business that is a mature business running really, really well, and it's gonna go from 550,000 to 650,000 the next year, and 700 and 750, and you're gonna grow the company because you're investing for growth. 15% you're investing just to maintain and you will not grow. Less than 15%, you might hover for a while and then you'll drop off a cliff. It doesn't happen gradually. It hovers, slowly comes down and then just drops. I've seen it a million times from three trucks to one because you just didn't continue to invest and other people caught up and then the second they catch up and pass you, you know, the lights are off. So um, anyway, so you want to allocate about 70% of that to online these days because that's where most people's attention are and their eyeballs are. 20% to offline and 10% to repeating customers to get them back into your database. So very simply on that 20% over the course of the year, you know you're going to be putting with ad spend and, you know, and companies that you're working with, you know, management fees and things like that. You're going to put about $70,000, $77,000 in, twenty two into offline marketing. That's your, your door hangers and your yard signs and your postcards and you know, taking the, uh, the real estate agents out for lunch and things like that, that all becomes an offline marketing expense and repeat business is your, your mailings and anything that has a cost to get your customers to come back. So we're not talking about discounts and things like that. It's just the cost, the actual raw physical marketing cost to get the customers to come back. And then, so that's the breakdown. If every month is fairly even in the area that you're in, that you're just going to break it down by this, this value right here. The online, the offline, and the repeat business, about $1,000 a month in marketing back to get customers to come back in. That's how you support a $45,000 per month cleaning business, is you're marketing your database, you're marketing offline, and you're marketing online to generate new leads and new customers as well. And then in the online breakdown, we suggest SEO, that gets you ranking really well. Paid ad sources, that's Google, Facebook, local service ads, Google Guarantee, stuff like that. And then a, a specific budget, I told you it's a much smaller, but a specific budget going towards retargeting. Anybody lands on your website, they're getting followed up and chased around. So display ads and retargeting. So you split it like that, SEO um, and, or, and, and organic type stuff, social media, SEO, the organic play. Um, Facebook and, and Google ads pay per lead, pay per, pay per click services and then retargeting and that's your good mix and then we even got on the back end here of the last tab you can actually there's our digital dominance method of how to actually build a growing carpet cleaning business uh, and what kind of offers you can add all throughout the course of the year so you got to think of this ahead of time so you got 12 months do you have 12 months worth of offers? And we're not talking offers like, hey, three rooms in a hall for $39.95 or $99.95, $129. No, no, that's, we're talking what kind of offers can you give where you're adding value? Here's what we will give you. And if you take us up on this month, we're gonna give, we're gonna add value. It's Father's Day, we're gonna give you a free barbecue set, you know, valued, you know, sixty nine ninety five or whatever you you bought on Alibaba, bought a case of you know fifty of them for five bucks each, and a dad's favorite armchair clean free with any minimum carpet cleaning service, things like that. Value added offers. That's the best way to go. So hopefully that makes sense. But that you've got this to play with. But I would start. This is your your planning. I would start with pay tab one. You got four tabs to work across, but just put in your numbers. Where do you want to be at the end of the year? Be reasonable. You're not going to triple your business in a year, but be reasonable and um, and work with this, uh, play with this. So carpetcleanermarketingmasters.com slash 2023 dash worksheet. Hopefully you find that an amazing and valuable tool because uh, it really is. It's a, it's a planning and thinking tool that allows you to really get focused. So what goal, what are your goals for 2023? How many leads do you need monthly to get there? Figure that out. Now you're gonna update your marketing message, right? The fundamentals of marketing is the market, the message, the market, and the media. 
So you can kind of go around this, this way here. But really the message is the what. What do you do? Why are you different? Why should your customers choose you over anybody else? That's your message. What is unique about you? What, what attracts them to using your services? And the uniqueness should not be the cheapest price or you'll go out of business. It really shouldn't. Um, you can't have a race to the bottom because the, the next time that customer needs service, they just find the next cheapest guy. Your market is who? So who is your ideal customer, right? Who, who is it that you want to service? Think of the last 25, 50 customers that you did work for. Which were the best customers? Which ones had no problem paying the rates you wanted to charge? Which had the nicest, you know, the easiest jobs, loved the service you did, gave you reviews, just really thought you were amazing. Think about the ideal customer that you want to clean for. And then, and only then, once you figure out who you want to target, do you want to target all of the, you know, million dollar homes is there enough of them in your area the you know people with large discretionary income half a million dollars and up um you know that kind of stuff a household income of 150 200,000 where are those communities you can find that data that data is available online you can find out where they you know the demographics of each little neighborhood and you can start marketing the neighborhoods that you want but you have to market differently because of that because there are different people um and that becomes the message why should they choose you over everybody else the people that live in you know million dollar homes aren't looking for a ninety nine dollar carpet cleaner. I can tell you that right now. And then you can figure out the media. What's you know what media they are, attracts them. How do they actually get to see who you are? What is that? Because it's different for every demographic. So who's your ideal customer? Let's think about that for a little bit. We call it the customer avatar, right? So think about who your ideal customer is and what are some of their um, what, do, what do we know about them, right? We're targeting homeowners. Renters tend not to pay for cleaning services repeatedly because it's somebody else's carpeting, tile floor, hardwood floor, things like that. They might own the furniture, they might not. Um, but we typically find that the best customers are the 35 to 55 year olds because they're in that period of life where things are getting dirty, kids are around, but they're trying to, they've got a little bit more discretionary income, their careers are a little bit better, um, and they're, they're growing through their careers and they're maintaining their stuff. They have better stuff and they're maintaining it. Typically it's the female, at least 75% of the time that call us. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're targeting the, the, you know, the females in your message Right, so you want to make sure that it's the it's it's the, that's the sentiment. Um, somebody who cares, you know, as kids, they're the head of the household, or you know, head of the you know, thinking about the household more. You know, you know, it's, I know it's very stereotypical, but you know, men might be the one that go out and cut the grass, stuff like that, and and the women might be the ones more caring about who's coming into the home to do stuff in in general. Um, so again, it's a generality, but in marketing, it actually bears out with you know, some demographic information and, and that you want to target for sure. Annual household income, that's really low, um, but you want to make sure that like in some markets, that's not bad, but you want to make sure it's at least above that. We usually find 80, 90,000 and up is a better household income, um, depending on the economy of the local area, family only oriented, um, reliable. They do typically own pets. We know that, you know, pets make a mess and they typically own pets, take pride in their home and they're into home decor. So think about that. How can you, like, they're into home decor. They're looking and thinking about, you know, home decor as well. So is there ways you can tap in that way? Um, they like to help others. Um, they, you know, maybe, maybe not the gardening, crafting, entertaining. There's, there's, there's things that they like to do around the home. They're not just in, grab a meal, go out for the night. That's not the crowd, right? So you think about it. They tend to live in suburbs or quieter, quieter areas, upper middle class neighborhoods and that kind of thing. That's, that's our demographic, right? Think about those. Um, their pains and frustrations around our industry can't seem to get a carpet cleaning company on the phone to return their phone call they text they can't seem to get messages back things like that um they they definitely need their carpet and, post and furniture cleaned um things aren't smelling well the animals have made a mess whatever teenagers have made a mess uh they're too busy to deal with it they're just trying to get it solved uh they're worried that the situation in the house could get unhealthy and they they want to know that they're maintaining the home and their belongings properly those are the fears right so um, the implications of those fears, they, they don't want to be ripped off or overcharged, right? They don't want that, that sense that they're, that they're, they're not going to get a good job. They're, they, they're paying too, too much for something and got somewhere else. That does not mean you need to be the cheapest. That's not what we're saying here. You need to understand that you need to express the value that you're providing. They have, um, they don't want their home damaged by faulty workmanship. They don't want carpets soaked for days. Um, they want to want to wait around 
you know, for somebody to arrive at their home. They want to know when you're arriving, things like that. We all know this stuff, but that's fears that they have. Oh my God, how how do I, uh, you know, I, I need to hire this. I've never hired it before. The last time I hired it, the, the, you know, the whole situation sucked. Can you talk about that in your marketing? Hey, we guarantee this. We'll always text on the way over. We give you a one hour arrival window, blah, 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 blah. Like whatever it is, talk about it in your marketing because that's their fears, right? Um, you know, we won't cause a disaster in your home, you know, blah, you know, whatever. Like there's ways that you can talk around those things. Um, you know, we have honest upfront pricing. Um, you might guarantee the price that you give over the phone. You might guarantee, you know, you might let them know that, you know, we'll come out and do an in-home or in-home quotation first. Um, the price you give them before the job starts is the price they'll pay, things like that. Um, and then the goals and desires, obviously they want to have the carpets cleaned. Um, they want to put the issue behind them which also means they want once they solve it once you the, you become their service provider that's what that means as well so because they want to have a well-kept home you're going to be advising them you're now the consultant to that um they want to take care of their family you know they obviously want more income money and wealth so you can talk about that how you can save money by maintaining and not having to replace the furniture it's expensive not having to replace the flooring it's expensive um maintaining it is always better than replacing it. Um, and they could be living in a nicer home because of it in a cleaner home. So, you know, things like that. So you just wanna go down that list and we've given the list in the workbook as well. So you wanna make sure you really understand who your ideal customer is. You wanna, these are some ideas, you wanna figure out which ones yours are. So hopefully that makes sense because once you know who your ideal customer is, now you can talk to them because if you can see Joe Jones through Joe Jones eyes, then you can sell what Joe Jones buys. I've always loved that little, that little limerick, that little, um, um, quote because it's so true if you can actually see you know not from your own perspective and you know what you knew growing up and what where you where where your life is at right now but where's their life at and what do they care about and if you can put yourself again marketing is basically math plus psychology if you can put yourself in the head of the other person and speak to them in the way they they you know make them feel at ease about oh this is such a great company these are who i want in your marketing you dominate you absolutely dominate. So that's now you're crafting your message. Um, you know, why should you? Um, so now you know who your market is. You're going to start crafting your message. So uh, why should someone choose to do business with you versus your competition? You need to answer that. What are the top three reasons? Write them down. Put them in the chat. Like, what are some of the reasons why people should, uh, you know, choose you over your competitors, right? And again, price should not be one of them. In fact, price is about fifth or sixth in in the average consumer's mind of what they need when they pick. Trust is more important than, than price and, um, you know, safe, healthy products and those kinds of things always come up higher in consumer surveys over the price they pay. We always think price is a concern. Consumers actually have better concerns. And if your marketing message can tell them why the cheaper price can't offer what you do, and here's why you, you, you don't run those prices, because we pay great technicians um, who stay with us for years and have families and blah, 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 all those kinds of things, you can tell them a really good message. So why should they choose to do business with you over anybody else? And what benefits do you offer your target avatar that will resonate with them? Right? Your benefits have to resonate with them. You can have some amazing benefits to you, but if it doesn't resonate with your target avatar, the target person you want, it doesn't matter. Those are, those are useless benefits. So messaging that work, eco-friendly, 100% satisfaction guarantee, it's free. If the spot comes back, so do we, free of charge. If we can't get a spot out and you find anyone else you can, we'll pay their bill to do that for you. We guarantee to get more spots out than anyone else, things like that. We can guarantee to get your carpet cleaner than anyone else. Um, we have highly trained technicians, bonded and insured, trustworthy. You're gonna get a picture of them, you're gonna meet them. You're gonna, see, you're, you're gonna get um, some, you know, a, a quick little video or an introduction message from them before you they even show up in your home, things like that. You can talk about things like that. You can easily set this type of things up. Um, we have phones and chat, um, live two-way chat answered live during business hours. You're not gonna get recorded messages and um, that kind of thing. Honest pricing, no sales gimmicks, no hidden costs, things like that. So the, those are the messages that resonate well with your customers. So, and you can make the case for, you know, um, other things that you can actually add in there is, Fast same day estimates. Maybe it's an estimate, not same day service. Um, so on the same day, you can pop out and do an estimate or you know phone estimates, things like that. Um, you have money saving offers. They can bundle and save. If they get the carpets and upholstery clean, there's a discount on the upholstery, things like that. Um, you leave the job, job site squeaky clean. Um, so you're not gonna make it dirtier 
you know, in their entrance way and around the home just because you're cleaning the carpets, everything gets cleaned up afterwards, the floors get swept, you know, all that you, you use, um, you roll out the red carpet, you use booties and mats and, and all of that kind of stuff. You talk about that, let them know that you do it, you do the job differently. Um, you have experience proven track record. Don't just say it, show it, have very specific testimonials and reviews that you're going to show in your marketing that talk to that and you have great service guarantees. It's great to have, um, um, you know, risk reversal guarantees, they're called, where you're reversing the risk. The customer doesn't take any risk to, to take you on. You'll end up with 10 times more customers than will ever add. You get the odd customer that might ask for a refund or ask you to honor the guarantee, but you've attracted 10, 20, 30, 50 more customers because you have it. So you're always at a net gain. If you run a great company and deliver great service, a great guarantee will always put you ahead of your, your competitors. So keep that in mind as well and have have testimonials and reviews and all that speak to that, right? I didn't, I didn't think that they, uh, they would honor the guarantee, but I had a spot that came back and they came right back out, gave me a gift when they arrived to apologize for having to come back out and took the stain out permanently and it stayed gone, right? And they explained why it, it, it came back, um, blah, blah, blah. And a review like that will sell 10, 20, 30 more people um, because they read that and go, oh my gosh, these guys seem so honest, right? So once you've got the market and the message, now you can figure out the media. Everybody jumps to the media first. Oh, I want to do Facebook ads. Oh, I want to do, you know, Google local service ads. Oh, what if the Google local service ads only attract discount buyers? Do you really want to do them? If your message and your market is not that, it's not just, oh, give me any jobs I can get. No, you don't grow a business that way. You target to grow a business, right? So now you want to make sure that your hub converts. So now you've got your, your market, you know who they are. You've got your message to that market. So you know the market and the message match. That's part of it. Now you, you have, you, you know what media that you, that has their attention, right? So, and there's a couple media we'll talk about here, but once you have their attention, what do they do? They don't just pick up the phone and call you. A lot of them end up on your website. That's how they get to your website. They've heard about you. They've seen some, they read some reviews. Okay. Let me check these guys out. Right. And your website is the hub of all of your digital marketing. It is your digital storefront and your digital storefront better be set up to convert. And what do we mean by that? There's a bunch of things that are really, really key to, to make sure your, your, your website is set up to convert. But when your website is set up to convert, we'll talk through a few of them, but this is an example of, of, a, of a site that's got a lot of conversion principles and psychology built. Just like the first thing you see before you even scroll down, the amount of psychology and conversion um, that's built into the top of this website. And this is one of our clients, but the top of this is, is insane. And what it does is it drives down the cost per lead. So your average cost per lead is, is because what that means is you're spending the same amount of money to try and attract the customers, but more and more and more of them become bookings and your average cost per lead drops substantially. So you want to have multiple sources to get them again, that as many places as you, as you can, can, can get a good ROI. If you put a dollar in the slot machine, pull the handle and you get 20 or $4 out. Put another dollar and get four dollars out why would you ever stop right so if you've got you know five six seven eight ten twenty different levers that are generating you customers but every single one of them, one of them you put a dollar in it's three dollars you know three dollars back worth of customers dollar in three dollars back another one's a dollar in five dollars back another one's a dollar in and four dollars back and ten dollars back and all that the goal is how many of those levers can you put in, in place at any one time? How many customers can you serve? Because you just want to keep racking up levers and that all of that with the with a great conversion principles. When they get to your website, they really feel like doing business with you over anybody else. They really get what you're all about. When that happens, your cost per lead just goes down. So what are those conversion principles? Um, you have to have real authentic images, the baby lying on the carpet with the dog and the family sitting on the couch and blah, blah. No, you have to have real family authentic images. Does your does your text speak to your customer avatar? Does it talk about those fears we talked about? Does, is your marketing message that they see right away answering those questions and making them feel that they can trust you? Um, do you have video elements on your website? People watch video nowadays more than, you know, than read text. You want to be able to show them in pictures. You want to be able to tell them in words and you want to be able to tell them in videos. Um, does it showcase your online reviews prominently? So, feedback and reviews right on the homepage. And is it like not just those static ones that they come back, uh, next time they come back, it's the exact same reviews scrolling through like a plugin. We're talking 
actual online live reviews they click on it they end up on that website where those reviews came from and they can see the actual online reviews does it make it easier for them to take action are there multiple ways for them to con connect with you um does it have basics in order? Do you have the phone number in the top right-hand corner? If you don't have your phone number big and in the top right-hand corner, people miss it. It could be buried on the site. They'd have no clue. Um, you want to? Is there a place where they can fill out a form and start, you know, in a web chat? Can they start talking to you right away? And do you have all your credibility symbols? Are you part of the Better Business Bureau, Angie's List, you know, Yelp, five-star rating on Google, you know, with 522 reviews? What you want to be able to add the credibility so that they know they made a good decision? Are there calls to action every time they scroll down the page? You know, you scroll once, is there a call to action there? You scroll again, there's a little bit more information. Is there a call to action there? Um, and are you leveraging offers in any way? Check out our, you know, our, our bonuses, check out, you know, the different offers. Again, not discounts, but value added offers that speak to your audience. And are you giving them that opportunity for a two way chat? More people want to chat nowadays than ever pick up the phone and call. And you want to be able to have a two-way chat. One of the best ways to do a two-way chat is chat to text. So it gets them off your website. Once they've been there, they start talking, their phone pings, and hey, we're going to carry on the conversation over here. And now they're texting you. You don't want to give away your text number, but there's technology that does that. And we can talk about that as well. And are you leveraging, uh, leveraging automation so that they are getting emails and text messages and other forms of communication automatically? So are you, are you leveraging all of that? So what does that look like? Carpet cleaning conversion machine. There's very specifics that a carpet clean, a, a, a service business website should have. Like they can look and feel differently, but they have to have these things built in. The title tag, the phone number, the logo, the risk reversal guarantee right at the top, call to action why you, the trust icons, the client testimonials, the, the, the forms, the live chat it doesn't have to be 24 seven, but the live ability to chat with you. Again, this is available, stick to the end and you can get all of these resources um, available as well, we'll give out that link. So you wanna pull up your website right now, if you want to pause, um, you know, pull up the website. Is it built to convert? Do you know what you need to tweak? Do you have personal pictures of you and your family? Do you have social proof and credibility? Do you have a form they can fill out? Do you have a chat? Do you have the phone number in the top right corner? Are you using all of those elements? What does it look like on a mobile device versus a desktop device? All of those things. So think about those. And write down right now, um, three of those conversion elements that you want to implement on your website. What are you missing? Do you need more pictures of you and your team and your staff? Do you need a video of you saying, hey, welcome to my, my website. My name is Joe and I've, uh, I've owned Joe's Carpet Cleaning for the last 22 years. Here's why I became a carpet cleaner and here's why I want to be your carpet cleaner. Do you got that message on your website? Like are people hearing from you? Is it in text with your face? Is it like, you know, when they scroll down, do they see like, you know, some stock photo of a carpet cleaning dude? Um, or do they see you and your team and the equipment that's going to be in their home? Does it look professional and presentable? Or is it all a rat's nest and messy looking as well? Things like that. So now the biggest challenge facing carpet cleaners literally is unconverted leads because you can generate leads. There's a million ways to generate leads. Um, with our with our clients, we've got we've got multiple ways to generate leads. We every client that comes with comes on board with us has like dozens of, of lead generation things added into their their website and their marketing just as part of our core package because it's never a one and done. It's not just one thing. It's it's all of it online, right? But the point is, unconverted leads are the biggest problem and we'll show you how to solve that. The reason why is 50 to 60% of inbound um, inbound um, leads leave. They come to your website, they come to your social media, they go anywhere, they just leave, they just leave. 90% of web forms completely fail to convert, completely. So it doesn't mean you don't have web forms, it just means because nobody answered them. There wasn't an effective communication on the back end. The truth is, you need to be following up with your leads within five to 15 minutes or they go cold. And I say stick closer to five, closer to one minute, the better. Whether they filled out a form, emailed your company, sent you a message on Messenger, sent you a, a message on your website, a text message, anything like that, any way that they communicate with you um, or picked up the phone and called, treat them all as a live phone call. A live phone call, you will answer it. Hey, you know, ABC Carpet Cleaning, how can I help you today? It's a great day here in Sacramento. How can I make it a great day for you? 
whatever your script is and you're talking to the customer right away when they message you and say hey i'm interested in this do you guys do that if they get a message back right away hey thanks so much for you know do, yes um absolutely something we do or they get a message saying yeah we'll get back to you soon right away just an automatic message shows up on their cell phone they go oh cool it's over here now that's great i don't have to sit on the website anymore off they go about their day and within a minute or two some hey yes i can definitely help you with that you know um what are you looking to get done let me ask some questions and you start the process right the average customer must also be followed up five to seven times before they book they do not book on the first okay let me think about it let me come back they come back with another question are you dripping upon them are you giving them more information in between those those interactions did they take a day or two and in the meantime you've shown them a great before and after um case study of a job that you've done similar to theirs you know things like that there's ways to influence the lead to keep them engaged with you and today's consumers prefer text messages over phone calls a lot so if you're doing if you're still answering a lot of phone calls and emails um and you don't have a text message solution then you're missing out somebody else in your marketplace who does is getting those messages it's not that the customer go okay i just i guess i'll call they will actually default and find somebody to text message if they can so you want to be able here's the solution you want to be able to market um, leverage marketing automation you want to follow up with web forms within the first two minutes um, of the submission again five to fifteen sooner the better two minutes is actually um infinitely better than five minutes um, and you want to be phone email text message all of it you want to automate the follow-up so every prospect is touched five times um, and they're able to engage in two-way text messaging so you want to be able to to connect all of the dots what does it look like it looks like this so we have a solution called carpet cleaner lead pro but either you build your own solution you patch together something but what you need is whether it's organic rankings google maps um you know the 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 come to your website there's organic rankings whether it's um google ads facebook ads google local service ads directory listings social media however they find out about you they dropped into a funnel and they instantly get message back thanking them and letting you know somebody's going to get a hold of them whether that's on the phone you're talking to them whether that's um an email or a you know a form on your on your website or again a text message or a messaging service or facebook messenger instantly get a communication back they get some you know, if you don't get back to them right away, it's not during business hours, um, you're not available, that, that kind of thing, then they get a nurture message within a short period of time to keep them engaged um, and ask them a few more questions, get a little bit more detail from them, and that should be automated. That's the automated process. And then you get a hold of them, go a little bit more de detailed on, on what they want, ask them if they can jump on a phone call, run through your script with them, have a text messaging script that you can have little conversations with them. It's called chat to text, so you're, you're you know, um, you're, 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 you're chatting, um, they're sell by chat, sorry, you're selling by chat and you have to know how to do that. You have to have your team trained on how to sell by chat properly. You do all of that kind of stuff. And now you're engaging and you're converting at a much higher rate. And then the people that turn out, yeah, let me think about it, whatever, they kind of go quiet. Most businesses never talk to them again, right? Most businesses don't message them back, don't call them again, don't email them again. An automated business means that if they've gone quiet for a couple of days, they should get a voicemail that drops into their voicemail. They go quiet for a couple of days, they should get an email and a text message. And this should be ongoing for the first couple of weeks until they, they you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna hold off right now or ah, I went with somebody else. Whatever the message is, um, now you wanna drop them into your long-term nurture and you wanna be able to get in front of them, you know, once a month or so with just a, a, you know, hey, just checking in type message. Is there anything that we can help you with? By the way, here's something we've done for one of, you know, a, another person in town that we're really happy. Here's their testimonial. Here's their the work we did. Um, if you ever need something like that, we'd love to, you know, we'd love to give you some pricing on that. You'd keep dropping like that over time. And that person might've chose somebody else. They might've decided to push it off. And then they're gonna come back up and go, okay, yeah, how much would they, yeah, let me, how much would that be? Yeah, great, I got a few more questions for you. I went back and looked at the notes, but you know, is it great to give you a call and ask you a few questions? Boom, you've now landed that client that was a lead six months ago. They're now a job now. They would never have called you or found you again if you're, if you're not nurturing and, and bringing them into your world. And what that looks like is really simple math. Say you get 100 leads. So in our previous example, that's, that's about 15, 10 days, 10 to 15 days worth of, of, of leads coming into a company, um, that might be a whole month to you, right? Whatever that is, 100 leads coming in and you convert at 30%, which is sort of like a, an average. No, no follow-up, they come in, you either answer them 
or you don't. You don't get back to text messages instantly or messengers instantly. You don't get back to emails maybe but once a day, that kind of idea. You'll book out of those about 30, 30 jobs out of those 100 messages. And you'll be frustrated and working, oh my God, this, these, these people are just all tire kickers. Say your average job is 325, so you're decent, right? That's a $9,000 um, a month business. 100 leads, $9,000 a month, right? Not bad, you know, nothing to write home about. You take the exact same 100 leads and ramp it up to 70% conversion because you're, you're responsive, you're on top of it, you're, you're chasing them down, you're giving them reasons to buy from you, all of that kind of stuff. Now it's the same 100 leads. That's all automated, so you're not doing anything extra. They get, you get 70 bookings from that, right? So that's something Carpet Cleaner Lead Pro can help with. You get 70 bookings. 325, nothing else changed there. Now, now with the simple math, you've now generated 22, almost $23,000. So you're up $13,000 for the exact same amount of leads. Would that transform your business? Is that once a month? Is that once, you know, twice a month? You get 200 leads a month, you know, whatever that is. You build the leads, you get the right target market, and then you convert um, and have conversion principles in place and automation, and you've got it solved. So it makes every lead way more valuable. Like that's a key slide right there. It really does. So what three conversion elements will you implement on your website? Think about that for a second. What are the conversion elements that you're going to implement on your website? So some takeaways, right? We're, we're almost wrapping up here. We've just been just over an hour, um, probably about five, five, six, seven minutes left. Um, but we want some takeaways. Put in the chat, write down, what did you learn? What do you, what do you understand more now about the business? Is it that you should be investing more, investing more in your marketing? 20% is key, that you need to plan the, you know, the, the growth. You need to know who your market is. You need to know where they live, how are you gonna target them, and what message do they wanna hear? What are, what are some of the things you took away? You understand that once you get all these eyeballs to you and you got the right message, the message is gonna help convert, but so are these other conversion principles, the ability to see you ahead of the job and hear from you um, and be, you know, on, you know, and start feeling that trust um, so that because people buy based on trust, especially with home cleaning services or home services in general, they need to know they want to trust you. And it's not about the lowest price. Um, your prices can be quite a bit higher than, 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 than the discount folks around. And you'll easily, easily um, get those prices if you've got the right message in the marketplace. And the final one is just know your, know your, know your numbers, know and track your KPIs. When you know and track your KPIs, you know how many, you know, how many sessions are coming into your website, how many, how many people are there, what are, what's happening, um, you know, how many people are bouncing from certain offers. You want to be able to have data on all of the different things that are out there so that you, you, you have things you can adjust. You, need, you know that you know, you're, you've got Google Ads running and your Google Ad, um, you've got a um, conversion rate of 12%. Is that good? You know? you know, is, you know, is 20% better, you know, is, is 10% too low that the conversion rate might mean that the, the landing page or the, you know, you're not taking the landing page, you're taking them to a website and they're, and they're, they're, they're going off to somewhere else and getting confused and leaving. Or if you have a dedicated landing page for carpet cleaning and a dedicated landing page for upholstery cleaning and a dedicated landing page for area rug cleaning and a dedicated landing page for tile and grout, that's all you're talking about. That's all your examples. That's the whole, and you give them one thing to think about, one thing to do, and your conversion should go higher as well. So again, once you know your KPIs, you know where to do the math. So hopefully uh, that about tracking and knowing, right? So example case study from one of our clients um, is October to December. Um, they were converted. They went up from converting at 31% to 65% over that um, from the previous year. They 367 leads is the number of leads that we tracked coming in based on our marketing efforts for them in a month or in that, sorry, that two month period, three months month period um so they they're converting at 60 uh 65 percent they generated 238 booked jobs that's the exact number we know right from their 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 database their average ticket is 415 they run a decent business 415 is a good a good a good um higher end market so in that three month period of time they generated just under a um almost a hundred thousand dollars was that $130 short of $100,000 um, in that in October to December, three month period. 
Um, so yeah, so there the 300 that this is a business that was a one truck operation that was growing now to um, two two and a half trucks, and in a very short period of time, they've almost doubled their business because they got the conversions right. The leads were coming in, and then they got the conversions right. So their their projected ROI, return on investment, because we know their investment. Um, to do that over that period of time, it was $6,677 in all of the different types of marketing that were being done for them, including the management fee, 15 um, times ROI, which is absolutely amazing numbers. So think about it. If you got your conversion right, you can spend more on marketing, right? So that's roughly about 2000 a month. And if you run the math, that's sitting right around that 20%, um, um, 18% um, of revenue of their of their new growth and their marketing budget is going to go up because the revenue has gone up and they need they spend more revenue to market even better and grow even faster and get even bigger right so that's you know that's that's the point of how you get to growth so so far what we've talked about clear goals and targets you need to set those we've got a guide for you we've got a worksheet for you all that kind of stuff you need to have clarity around your market who they are then the message right why should they choose you and then pick the media. Where do they hang out and how are you gonna get that message in front of them? Uh, you wanna make sure your website is optimized for conversions and you wanna have a KPIs and tracking. So key trends for 2023, let's keep an eye on what's coming up. This is all very important. You must have an all-in perspective. Uh, this, is, this is critical. Omnipresence is the, is the key. You need to be talking, thinking about SEO, pay-per-click, local service, social media, email, direct mail, all of it. You need to be omnipresent. You need to be everywhere your, your potential customer is that can find you because that is how you convert. Marketing is, is tough. The market is saturated. The economy is going to go, you know, is up and down like a yo-yo right now. We have no idea where it's going to go. And you need to be seen by everybody who is interested and could be interested in your cleaning, your ideal customer. Video. The, 2023, um, if 2022 was sort of the year of, of, of text and automation, I think 2023 is the year of video. Um, you need to be looking at how can you generate more video content? Um, there's ways there's ways that we help our clients do that. There's trainings involved in that, but is there any way, can you add some some video to your website? Can you add videos to um, your social social media? Is there, you know, is there ways that you can add video and tell you know, teach and tips and, or at least, hi, thank you, welcome to my website. Is there ways that you can add video? Because that is really gonna resonate with, with more and more people. And conversion optimization and artificial intelligence. Um, artificial intelligence is taking over everything. Is there ways that you can tie the two together? Um, can you have automation that answers questions for customers before you even have to jump in. Things like that. Is there a way to, to add those pieces? Can you have automation in the background, um, lead automation, lead nurturing, things like that? So you really want to think about that. So you want to be building your plan. So um, want to think about where all your jobs can come from. So this will be in the, um, the workbook and the guide and stuff like that as well. You've stuck around to the end. We want you to have um, the custom action plan. You want to go through the checklist, see what you need to put in place, print it off, go through it, check off the things that um, that, uh, that 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 you need um, that you don't have in place, and think about how you're going to get them in place into your marketing plan. So you want you want to eventually have every one of these checked off. You want to have all of your digital marketing checked off. So, but what you want to do is you want to do it in in, in chunks. So we always say in groups of three, what are the top three internet marketing initiatives that you need to implement to hit your, and again, that should be 2023 goals. <laughs> so what do you wanna do to hit your, what did you do to hit your 2022 goals? Did you hit them? What do you wanna do to hit your 2023 goals? What are the big things you wanna do? And what are the things that you can handle in the first quarter? And what how are you gonna break them down by the month? So. What are the, you know, right down to the specifics, you wanna go through and spend some time doing this. So this was just an overview of how to get there. So we've covered, you need to set the goals. You need to know, you, we know the three fundamentals of marketing success, which is the market, the message, and then the media in that order. We wanna optimize our website for conversions, for sure, and everywhere else that we can for conversions. You wanna be, you, you wanna give them a reason why they should buy from you. And part of that is telling that message, but part of that is making sure it's optimized everywhere. The big picture on all marketing channels should be to maximize your lead flow. You wanna be omnipresent. 
the latest trends to focus on. Again, you want to be all in on your marketing. You want to be finding ways to continuously market in more and more channels because the more channels you're on, the more eyeballs people will see you um, and your ideal customer. You want to be on the channels that your ideal customers are on. Um, you want to develop a custom action plan based on where you are now and where you know you need to be, right? So get that all in place. Key takeaways, right? We talked about what we, what have you learned? What are you going to implement? Don't just walk away from that. Hey, that was a lot of great information. My gosh, listening to John is like uh, drinking from a fire hydrant. There's so much information. No, what are you going to implement? What can you do? What resonated with you? Start with that. Go back through the worksheets we've got, um, all of that kind of stuff. And you know, for those of you who stuck around to the end, go to carpetcleanermarketingmasters.com slash rewards. We're going to give you the checklists and the guides and all that stuff we talked about in the website conversion machine. You're going to learn all of that and you're going to be able to understand what you need to do. You don't have to be the one to do it. You can hand it off to somebody to do, but you're going to understand what you need to get in place and you can really add that to your plan, knowing that you're going to get your website made totally personal, just about you in the next 30, 60 days, 90 days, get some pictures taken, whatever you need, you know, hire, hire a videographer for a day, have your brother-in-law chase you around with a cell phone, doesn't really matter. Find ways to make it all about you know you and why you're different. Structure your message that you want your customers to understand, right? We call that our digital dominance method. It includes everything from your risk reversal guarantee, things that we know convert a business, your personalization, um, your citation development, things like that, your authority, which is your um, get feedback from your customers, not just reviews, syndicate the feedback, syndicate reviews, cross-channel promotions, retarget in a very strategic way. You can actually retarget almost like a funnel where they see different, different retargeting messages every couple of days that lead them through a path. Um, make sure you're running paid ads somewhere in the mix. You can't survive without with some paid marketing, some organic marketing. Um, you want to be having referral marketing. Every client should be referring you and posting out on social media about you. And there's ways to make that happen automatically. Um, you want to be getting strategic partners in your marketplace to promote you as well. And there's ways to do that. You want to be doing emails and newsletters and all of that kind of stuff. You build to this. This isn't all done at once, but you build to this and you're running a machine of a business that is profitable and fun to manage, easy to run. You're not necessarily the guy in the truck if you don't want to be, the gal in the truck if you don't want to be. If you want to be, that's great. These things can be done and you're you're you know outsourced and you're a profitable company if you want to be running a business with technicians and growing and adding other services. Maybe in your marketplace you want to add maid services, janitorial services, um you know, you want to do hardwood refinishing, not just cleaning, things like that. There's all these other services that once you get this right, you can add to your business if that's your growth plan mm -hmm. over the next multiple years. So anyways, we always like to end these webinars. Anybody who st sticks around to the end and is on the webinar, you've got the ability to actually get a consultation. So go through the planning, download the stuff. Just hop on a call with us, we'll do it with you. But for a limited time, it's $1,000 worth of research, consultation, and advice. Why do we say that? Because we literally put our research team in place to go after, check your market, check your competition, check your demographics, check the average household income, check the pockets and areas of your neighbor, of your marketplace that, that you could target and, 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 and have a different looking business than the one you have now or expand the business you have. And then we go through all that and you jump on a call on a one hour call with me where we dive deep into all the numbers and the metrics, what's holding your website back, what's holding your social media back, what's holding your paid ads back, all that kind of stuff. And where are you at in your business and where do you need to go? It's a great time of year to do that. You can jump on one of those calls. Um, and to do that, we have limited spots. So you, you connect with us, you can connect with Rima in the chat. Um, or you can just reach out to us at carpetcleanermarketingmasters.com slash schedule. And what's going to happen is you can schedule a time. You're not locked into that, that appointment until Rima gets a hold of you and gets some background information to put our research team to work for you. So you always want to schedule a couple days out so, and, and take the call from Rima or she'll message you and make sure that we've got the information that we can do our research. And then you can jump on a call. I do a couple of those a month and you can pick a time and jump on a call. And once the slots are gone, we just shut it down um, till the next month. So this is me giving back a way to help your business. If there's something we can help you with, um, you know, with our services and it makes sense, sure. 
Otherwise, it's here's a whole step by step. Here's what you need to put in place. Let's get going. So, you know, depending where you're at, we can help at any level. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, hopefully you found uh, found the information that we've provided here, you know, helpful to you. There we go. We let the bubbles go by. So um, another thing you can actually do is pick a cup of copy of the of the book. It's on Amazon. Um, you can get the Kindle version for a couple bucks um, or the actual physical version where you can put notes and highlight and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've got worksheets and stuff like that in here as well. It's a deep dive into marketing for your carpet cleaning business. Um, it's uh, I think it's retailing for about 20, 22 bucks on, on Amazon. So you can find that easily. But um, yeah, hop on a call if you need us. Um, and hopefully you found this valuable, but do the work right now. Plan for, plan your 2023 goals and what you're going to put in place and break it down into bite-sized chunks and just start doing it. That's how your business grows. You don't want to be a business that the majority of businesses, 75, 80% of small businesses repeat year one over and over and over again. They don't really get much better than the end of year one, maybe year two, and they just repeat the same things. They know what they know and that's all they do and they never plan for growth. The strategic businesses, that smaller percentage, they plan for growth, put it in place, and they're the ones that survive and last and, and don't go out of business in the five, 10 year average lifespan of a business window. They, they, they can hand it off to their kids. They can, you know, they can sell the business for good value and, and build a nest egg and have a profit and all of those kinds of lifestyle things that you started your business for in the first place. So you can get to there. It just takes a bit of thinking and, and, and planning. And hopefully this was a good guide um, to help you plan your 20, uh, 2023 outright. And again, if you need any help, give us a call. And in the meantime, thanks so much, guys. Really appreciated being with you here today and uh, look forward to, to chatting at you next time. Take care.